All right, so um, I'll be talking about the work I did in my honours last year, and my project was on the influence of dynamic topography, climate and tectonics on the history of the Nile River. In this project, I worked mainly with Tristan, Claire and Sabine, as well as Sue Song, and industry, industry partners from Chevron. So the immediate perhaps inspiration for this project was the publication of this paper, which looked at the interactions or the correlations between the sediment record of the Nile River and the dynamic topography of Northeast Africa over the last 40 million years. And we thought that we could use Badlands to perform more quantitative measure, uh, experiments to perhaps identify the relative impacts of uh, factors such as dynamic topography on the evolution of the Nile, as well as uh, tectonics, climate change, and sea level. And as with that paper, we also used a time frame of the last 40 million years for our models. Uh, the model inputs included an initial topography surface, uh, which was generated using the paleoflow workflow, which Claire des uh, described earlier this evening. And we also used horizontal motions derived from plate reconstructions and vertical motions from tectonic uplift and subsidence estimates and dynamic, different dynamic topography models, as well as major volcanic events such as the eruption of the several kilometer thick uh, flood basalts of the Ethiopian plateau. We applied a paleo precipitation history derived mainly from a global paleoclimate model, but also modified according to various local paleoclimate proxies for the region. And we applied a consistent sea level curve to all of our models. Uh, regarding the dynamic topography scenarios, which we tested, there were two main dynamic topography models uh, shown here at 40 million years ago. And they are mainly distinguished by the presence or absence of, the, of a signal related to the Afar mantle plume under East Africa, as well as the extent and magnitude of dynamic subsidence around North Africa related to subduction associated with the Tethys Ocean. I also created a hybrid dynamic topography scenario, which included elements from both of the models. And it was this hybrid scenario which actually produced the best fit with uh, the Nile River data. And so this was selected as our preferred model for the region. Um, the results of the Badlands models can be seen here with the evolution of topography on the left and deposition and erosion on the right. Uh, the most relevant parts of this uh, video here are the uh, localization of erosion in blue here on the Ethiopian plateau. So that's the Ethiopian flood basalts, as well as the uh, significant deposition in the Nile Delta off the north coast of Africa. Uh, looking in more detail at the Nile Delta, we can see that the modeled sediment distribution here on the left corresponds quite well with the actual sediment distribution for the Nile Delta. And so <clears throat> This was part of the uh, this was part of the evidence used for why this is our preferred dynamic topography scenario for the region. Uh, we also looked at the sedimentation history for the Nile Delta in our model, which allows allows us to identify several of the most important events in the history of the Nile. So these include the beginning and end of the blood basalt volcanism associated with the Afar plume on the Ethiopian plateau. And this was responsible for a huge pulse of sedimentation in the Nile Delta. Uh, we could also identify the formation of the Sahara <coughs> Desert and the relative motion between the Afar plume and the African plate in the upper Nile catchment. Uh, <clears throat> we were also able to perform a stratigraphic analysis of the model results. So here we have constructed cross sections through the Nile Delta. This allowed us to visualize the simulated strat stratigraphic structure of the Delta through time. 
and it allowed us to identify the impact of sea level changes and flexural isostasy and sediment flux. Um, in conclusion, we determined that the Ethiopian flood basalts associated with the Afar plume were perhaps the strongest single influence on the evolution of the Nile, while dynamic topography, particularly related to sub, uh, subduction zones north of Africa, as well as climate change, in particular the formation of the Sahara Desert. These two factors were both strong influences on the Nile River. And sea level change through time was mainly evident in the stratigraphic structure of the Nile Delta. And are there any questions? <laughs>